Guys, it's happening. I'm hosting The Daily Show. For a week. I am so excited to be back at The Daily Show. I get a chance to go back and work with the best writers and producers and correspondents in the business. And I got some very serious stories to talk about and also some very stupid ones. Oh, this is awesome, like my own desk. This is kind of cool. I can, I can, it's, still, it's still my desk. No, 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 I, can, I like, like this is all me and it's my show. But before we kickstart my week at The Daily Show, Tyler thinks we should take a trip down memory lane and watch my original audition for The Daily Show. I haven't seen this tape in almost 10 years. <laughs> Enjoy. All right, watch me get in character. Boom! For more, we're gonna go out to our senior political correspondent, Hassan Minaj. Hassan, uh, it, 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 isn't it hypocritical, if I may, for Harry Reid to try to draw a distinction between Sheldon Adelson and the Koch brothers? Mm, nope. This was an existing chat that they had done on the show with Jason Jones. And so I remember watching it and thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, how do I not deliver something the writers, the producers, and John have already seen on its feet before, but I make it my own? And it's also so weird seeing me without any facial hair. Well, because Sheldon Adelson's money and power mm -hmm. help Harry Reid, mm -hmm. and the Koch brothers' money and power don't. Therefore, the Koch brothers are corrupt. It's a pretty simple concept to grasp, John. You're saying, Hassan, may I call you Hassan? Call me Hassan. That becomes a moment later in my career that you can't call me Hassan anymore. But at that time, John can call me whatever he wants. He's not Ellen. You're saying the effect money has on Harry Reid determines whether it's corrupt or not, that money. Exactly. Look, maybe, maybe some visual aids will help your dumb brain process this information, all right? I appreciate that. Over here mm -hmm. is a pile of polluted influence greenbacks that the Koch brothers smear across our democratic principles. One word, John, yuck, mm. all right? Now over here yeah. is a beautiful, majestic pile of Liberty Bucks that Sheldon Adelson sprays like the sweet perfume of freedom on the taut, slender nape of our nation's neck. I'm gonna fuck that bag, the way you <laughs> describe that. Yeah. I'm beginning. That wasn't in the script. So when he goes, I'm gonna fuck that bag, in that moment, I'm like, all right, so we're going. Are we gonna just kind of go off script? Like, here we go. So in my mind, I'm kind of thinking, I'm like, all right, John's playing. Like, we're in the game, he's playing, let's go. I'm but a I'm US citizen, all right? And if I wanna fuck Uncle Sam, that's my prerogative, John. I think that is your prerogative. But listen to me, there, there, there's no, and I'm looking at this objectively, there's no difference. Let me give you an analogy that the 99% of us can understand. All right. When I was in high school, I used to work at Office Max, humble brag. <laughs> Wait, how is that a... Okay, now, I mean, I'm not even in the prompter right now. The prompter guy is just kind of like, he's floating there. Like, he's kind of like, the next line in the chat is just kind of hovering in prompter. All and right. I used to sell printers. How can I help you take it to the max, John? It's still in me. All right. And the dude would walk in every once in a while. You gotta bleep that name. That's a real person's name. Bleep that name. Yeah. She worked at Orange Julius, and she'd say, how much is a Canon 5920, Hassan? I'd say $100, but for you, $69.99. Then when I would walk into Orange Julius, she would hook up your boy with the razzmatazz. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's delicious. Normally 379 for me, free 99. Now later on that year, <laughs> he worked at Best wow. Buy and he was hooking up kids on the lacrosse team yeah, with yeah, PS3s yeah. and he got caught stealing. Yes. And as far as I'm concerned, fuck you <laughs> and that is corrupt, dishonest and wrong and the Arden Fair Mall does not need that type of dishonesty. This is completely unhinged. Like, I'm naming people straight up from my high school. I'm airing out dirt. I'm just being like, all right, I'm gonna do this Office Max and Jamba Juice story. And I was trying to connect the analogy to hooking people up to like political corruption um, in Washington, D.C. But here we go. You know, Hassan, it, it, it does my heart good to hear you talk about this. I know Yeah. <laughs> And that prick uh, sold me a PS3 with a dead hard drive. And I Motherfucker, just wanted, really? Motherfucker. But let me ask you this then. What is corruption? Well, corruption is a billionaire who spends their money on shit you don't like, i.e. and hooking up those kids on the lacrosse team with PS3s. And what is free speech? A billionaire who spends his money on shit you do like, i.e. 
hooking me up with the razzmatazz. But that doesn't sound like democracy, Hassan. That sounds like you're, 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 we're living in an oligarchy. John, that sounds delicious. Have you had a razzmatazz before? No, I I'm not gonna lie to you, man. When I was going back and forth with him about the whole Orange Julius, uh, PS3, Office Max printer, that whole thing about hooking people up, it was terrifying. I was like, if he's not into this, this whole chat has gone off the rails. But if he is into it, then we're home free. I think what comes after this is the desk chat. I've talked about this in Homecoming King, which is the famous Batman versus Bill Maher desk chat. I've recalled it a million times through Homecoming King, but I, I haven't actually watched the chat, but. Uh, I'm gonna do this cold. If I don't get the part, I understand. Uh, so last week on, on Real Time with Bill Maher, Hollywood heartthrob Ben Affleck appeared on the panel with Sam Harris to discuss ISIS and radical Islam. During the discussion, Affleck defended Muslims, calling Maher's sweeping criticism of the Muslim world ugly, racist, Islamophobic. Here to discuss the impact of Affleck's statement, senior Muslim correspondent Hassan Minhaj. Uh, Hassan, thanks for joining us to, to, tonight. What, what is, what? John, I'm pumped. I don't know if what? you can tell by my energy. The I see vibe. It. I see it. Let's pop some Martinelli's right here, right now, John, because we got our first A-list celebrity to back the Muslim community. Mama, we made it. We got Batman on our side, y'all. Ben, you may not be the hero we want, but you are the hero <laughs> the Muslim world needs. That's such a bad Batman impression. I don't even know if I can still do it. You are the hero. Like, I'm not good at it. God bless him. Look at him. He's just smiling. He's giving it up. Did not see that coming from inside there. Assalamu alaikum, Ben. That is actually quite beautiful. W w what do you think, though, about Mars' comments uh, uh, about radical Muslims, jihadists? The only radical dudes I know are Ninja Turtles, and we all know Michelangelo, Donatello, Leonardo, and Raphael were backed by the church. The Medici family backed them. You know this. Don't twist history. I know that. Jihadist. I've been to Sunday school, and I went with Libyans, Syrians, Iranians, Indians, Pakistanis, and kids from every brown country that has a cricket team. <laughs> we barely have the guts to move out of our parents' house before the age of 30. You honestly think we're gonna blow ourselves up? We kill the MCAT, John, not innocent civilians. This is a little detail, but it's really good news when you can hear the writers and producers laughing. That means they're in on it. That means they're like, oh, all is well in the kingdom. The host is laughing, we're laughing. Like when you hear in rehearsal or in an empty studio, the host and the writers and producers laughing, man, you're off to the races, this is great. I'll say this on the record right here, right now, I hate ISIS. I hate ISIL, I hate isosceles triangles. I was horrible in geometry. Right. But how many times do I have to publicly apologize for what they've done just because we're both brown? No, I get that. Look, you don't see Bill Maher apologizing for colonialism, slavery, racism, school shootings, and most importantly, Malibu's Most Wanted, starring Jamie Kennedy. That would be ridiculous to blame him for all those atrocities. Iggy Azalea isn't his fault. It's all of ours. <laughs> you're saying you're tired of having to apologize for, for your religion, for being Muslim. Yes. Look at me, I'm exhausted, John. You look exhausted. Yeah. I shave twice against the grain. <laughs> I walk into every airport, even when I'm late. I refuse to play Jenga the entire month of September. Look, the Indian John Stamos look is exhausting. I see the quaff, John. It's hard to maintain. No, I know. I'm running on E, man. Don't you feel at times Islam, though, like all religions, has some extreme elements that, that foster intolerance, terror, death, these types of things? Sure. Uh -huh. I mean, you take anything to the extreme and it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. You take the ice bucket challenge too far, you'll end up like Jack at the end of Titanic. I love Red Bull, but for Loco, you're gonna shit bricks and punch a cop. No one needs that. <laughs> I love Harry Potter, arguably yeah. the greatest film series in history, but adults that play in real life Quidditch leagues, y'all are the craziest muggle fuckers on the planet. Stop it, you're an adult with a 401k. You're embarrassing yourself. I remember that was a thing. I remember that was a thing and I'm like, this is so ridiculous. What are you doing? You have a Roth IRA and you're just running around on a broomstick in parks and you're 36 years old. What is going on? So what's gonna push Muslims forward around the world? What can we, what, what, what's gonna do it? This is great, John. I love Thank this you. dialogue. We're, this having, we're having a dialogue. Yeah, this is yeah, what yeah. it has Huff to be. Huff Jezebel. It's interfaith. Blog this. Interfaith. There's 1.5 billion Muslims around the world, John. What? And, yeah. Maybe 1.6 now, we fuck a lot. <laughs> and there's 5.5 billion other people like yourself. What? We have to work together and look out for one another. Thank you. Ben Affleck making movies like Argo is gonna push the culture forward. 
Films like Rosewater in theaters November 7th. 14th. Okay, 14th. Rotten Tomatoes score 78%. That is right. Starring a Mexican man playing an Iranian dude. Nice. That's going to push the culture forward. Thank you. Thank Prince you. of Persia 2 starring Jake Gyllenhaal, a white guy. That's going to push the culture forward. Grab the spray tan because I will take what I can get. Hassan, thank you so much. Hassan thank Minaj. You so much, Thanks for the healing. Appreciate Thanks for the healing. Well done, sir. Well done. Dude, I haven't seen that in years, man. The show really takes the shape and the form of whoever is behind that desk. So, you know, the way John did it or Trevor did it, it's so different. Like, each performer brings their worldview to the desk. So what I'm really excited about is there's been all these news stories and all these headlines and these takes that I've been sitting on that I can't wait to share. And I've always been like, ah, I need a, I need an outlet. I need to be able to have some, a desk, go down the barrel to camera one, a graphic over here. And um, yeah, I've been sitting on some stuff. So it's gonna be really fun. And you get to work with some of the most talented ambitious people in comedy, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be a hell of a week. We got some bangers. I'll just put it that way. We got some bangers.